Okay, we're still talking about inverse sine and inverse cosine, and we'll work through some simple example problems where we use inverse sine and cosine to solve some problems. And in example five here, we're just given a diagram and we're told to find theta. Okay, here's angle theta, and this is a right triangle, as you see there, and notice what we see here. This side right here is the side opposite angle theta, and this side right here is the hypotenuse. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So what trig function comes to mind when you have opposite and hypotenuse? Well, the sine functions should come to mind because sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So in this case, in this case, the sine of theta is 3.1 over 7.4. Okay, but now we're not told to find the sine of theta, we're told to find theta. So if the sine of theta is this, then the inverse sine of this will be theta. So theta will be the inverse sine of 3.1 over 7.4. And I think it's best to do this in one step. You could do this calculation right here, 3.1 over 7.4, like watch this, 3.1 divided by 7.4 and get 0.4189. So I could right here just put in 0.4189, but that's not the best way to do it because this is a rounded number. If you just leave this in place like this, the calculator will compute this and use all of those digits to do the inverse sine. So let's do it that way. I'm going to write inverse sine. I'm going to type it in. Let me move this over here. I'm going to type it in exactly as you see it there. Inverse sine of 3.1 divided by 7.4 and hit enter. And that's 24.77 degrees. 24.77 degrees. Okay, here's uh, example six. We're told to find alpha. That's this angle right down here. And look what we're given. 18.7 is the side adjacent to alpha, and 19.5 is the hypotenuse. And when you have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, the cosine function comes to mind. I'm going to go ahead and write this. Cosine of alpha is 18.7 over 19.5. So if the cosine of alpha is this, then the inverse cosine of this will be alpha. So you can say alpha is the inverse cosine of 18.7 over 19.5. And if you write your fraction vertically like that, that's fine. Or if you write it like this, 18.7 divided by 19.5, that's a little bit less standard, but I think the meaning is clear. And sometimes you see people write it that way because on, on these calculators, which are fairly common, that's how it looks. Um, although writing it as a fraction uh, with the above and below is, is more standard practice. But anyway, let's put this in. Inverse cosine of 18.7 divided by 19.5 gives us our answer. 16.47 uh, 16 degrees. So alpha is 16.47 degrees. Again, it's best to do this in one step. Don't pre-calculate the value of that fraction. Just put it all in in one step like that. OK, now uh, one other quick comment. If you want to think about this algebraically, uh, sometimes the inverse sine and inverse cosine and inverse tangent, the inverse functions are tricky sometimes because you're thinking kind of in reverse from the way you normally think. So if you want to think about this problem the way you normally think about algebra, think of this as an equation because it is. It's saying this equals this. And in algebra, we can do anything we want to do to an equation as long as we do the same thing to each side. So here's the cosine of alpha. If I want to find alpha, then I can use the inverse cosine. So I'm going to imagine taking the left side and the right side and taking the inverse cosine of each side, following the standard algebraic procedure of doing the same thing to each side of the equation. So it would look like this. I would write 
the, the left side would then look like this. The inverse cosine of this right here, cosine alpha. So there I just took the inverse cosine of the left side. That equals the inverse cosine of the right side, 18.7 over 19.5. Okay, and you can see what I have written here in green is exactly what I had up above, but now I have the inverse cosine of the left side and the inverse cosine of the right side. And that should make sense to you in terms of ordinary algebra. And then if you remember inverse functions, look at this. The inverse cosine of the cosine of alpha is just alpha. Because if you have a function and its inverse, they undo each other. Just like the square root of x squared is x, because square root and squaring are inverse operations. Here the cosine and the inverse cosine are inverse operations. That's why it's called inverse cosine. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of alpha is just alpha. So the left side becomes alpha and then the right side is this, the inverse cosine of 18.7 over 19.5. And of course you just put that in on the calculator and that gives us what we found earlier, 16.47 degrees. So I just point that out because some people find it easier to think of it that way. Think of it as taking the inverse cosine of each side and uh, some of my students find it easier to solve problems like this without getting confused by doing it that way.